Hello there again, everybody, and welcome to another edition of TrekWorks. Well, I've got another project going on here on the channel for you guys. This is a great little model kit in 124 scale of the Aston Martin DB5 from the classic film Goldfinger. This kit's put out by a Japanese model company called Doyusha. And I just recently found out that they made this kit, and uh, this is their special Goldfinger edition. They also make this kit in the standard DB5. And uh, I love the film Goldfinger. Sean Connery is my favorite James Bond. It's one of my favorite James Bond movies, so I had to get this kit when I saw it. And this thing is loaded with all the cool little James Bond gadgets that were on the car that we saw in the movie, like the flipping license plates, the machine guns up front, the uh, tire shredding mechanisms here on the side, the uh, uh, ejector seat with the, you know, the removable roof panel and the bullet deflector shield there at the back behind the rear back glass. So this is a really, really neat little kit, and it's a great little size at 124 scale. I'll show you a little bit of the box art here. You can see uh, the artwork here on the car. You've got some beautiful, it looks exactly like the DB5. It's a really beautiful mold and a lot of detail, a lot of chrome parts and everything on this kit. Some nice wire wheels and everything. And uh, you can see here that we also get the figures that uh, of uh, James Bond and Oddjob. Oddjob's one of my favorite villains from the film. Uh, of the entire Bond series and uh, the kits actually come, the figures actually come in this kit. So we'll go ahead and take the lid off here and check this thing out. I'm gonna be building this one up here next. Uh, I'm waiting for some stuff to come in from the kit, for the kit uh, Knight Rider project I'm working on. So I'm gonna be working on this one in between. Now, uh, I'll show you the body here first, guys. I've uh, actually done a little bit of work to this already. I've uh, laid down my uh, silver paint job and uh, I've opened up the, uh, the roof uh, mechanism here on the top and the little slotted area here where the uh, bullet deflector shield goes. You have to actually open those up. The kit's made to uh, uh, either display it with or without those. It's up to the builder to do that. So, but I've laid down a really nice uh, silver paint job on this with a clear coat over it, so it's ready to go. I've got to go back and do all my chrome highlighting details on it here and there, but uh, body is pretty much ready to go. Uh, here's a really interesting part of this kit. Like I said, these are the great little 24 scale uh, figures. I'm really impressed with the sculpt that they've done on the Sean Connery uh, Bond figure here. It looks exactly like him, and Odd Job really looks uh, like he should too. Uh, if you guys know who Odd Job is, he had this uh, bowler type hat with a steel rim on it, and he was really good at throwing it from quite a ways away. And if he hit you with it, you were in really big trouble. So, uh, really cool. Let's pop these out of the uh, package here real quick. First, I'll show you that they do include a nice little display base that the car and the figures will fit on. So that's a nice little touch that they included. And we'll pull these figures out here and take a look. Um, I'll take these out of the bag here for you. Uh, I had a look at these and I was really impressed, like I said, with the sculpt work. I'll try to get these as close to the camera as I can without getting blurry on you. But the uh, Bond figure especially, he looks really good. He looks just like Sean Connery. I'm really impressed with that. And I'm going to... I hope I can do a good job painting these. I'm not the best figure painter in the world, but hopefully I can do a decent paint job and look these, make these look pretty cool. And they're gonna be neat to have on display with the model. I'm not gonna be doing any um, electronics or lighting on this at all, or no sounds or anything. Just a straight out of the box build. Nice and easy build. Uh, but the car has a lot of detail on it, so that should be really nice. Let's set the figures off to the side here and we'll take a look at the parts trees. Uh, you can see here that uh, this is what they call a curbside kit again. The hood doesn't open on this, similar to your uh, Aoshima cars and some of the other ones that are out there. So there's no engine detail, but you do have a lot of detail on the interior and the body, uh, and all of his gadgets are on the car, and that's what I really liked about this kit. We've got the basic interior bucket here with the door panels, the uh, bucket seats, the rear suspension uh, with the drive shaft and transmission, front uh, strut suspension. You've got your... Uh, interior console detail here with the tracking device that he had uh, inside the car and you've also got the little armrest detail that flips open and you've got the controls for the defense mechanisms inside the vehicle and some parts for the wheels here that's our first sprue looking at the chrome sprue here you can see there's a lot of detail there we've got all the little accessories and everything that mount on the body the mirrors the spinners now you can either uh, display this with the spinners in their regular position or the extended uh, 
sort of wheel shredder spitters, if you want to call those. And uh, so we'll be putting those on the car, and that'll be uh, pretty neat. We've got our grill here. I've done a little bit of work. I've done a little bit of a wash on the grill already. I've got to do uh, one more coat on that to make it show up a little bit better. And I've done a wash on the, uh, the wire wheels there, if you can see those, and they look great. Um, we've got our bumper here in the front that has the uh, rotating license plate mechanism. Like I said, it'll flip to three different sides. Um, you've got your uh, extended, uh, there's the little bumperette, little bumpers on the front of the car actually extended out. I don't know if they actually showed that during the movie, but they, uh, they did have the capacity to, to kind of pop out and act like a kind of a ramming device. Here you can see the little uh, illuminated uh, tracking mechanism that he had there at the dash and a hidden panel and the uh, armrest. Uh, area here where you see all the the uh, defense uh, switches for like the machine guns the oil slick the smoke screen all the stuff he could deploy the uh, bulletproof shield in the back so it's great that they included all this stuff in this uh, kit uh, you've got an interior mirror here the external mirrors on the fender mount mirrors um, really nicely done the the uh, moldings for these are really nice and crisp and clean and what I really like uh, about some of the uh, uh, Japanese kits is whenever they put their parts on these sprues here, if there's going to be exposed areas, they mold them so that the uh, the tabs are nice and away from the edges so you don't get that little loss of detail when you cut these parts off of the sprue. So that's another little nice touch uh, on the kit. We'll set this one aside now. Here we have the tires, and these are some really nice real rubber tires. I like the fact that they don't have any writing on the sides. The car in the film didn't have any, and uh, they're real rubber, and they don't have that usual... Uh, seam line that's been molded down the center of them so they look really great and uh, another nice touch there we'll take a look at the glass here uh, you've got the front the side and the rear glass included in, in one solid piece I'm gonna be cutting these open so I can have the side windows uh, door windows open and uh, that way I can get my finger in there too to raise the uh, you know remove the roof panel if I want to display it either open or closed and uh, our headlight detail here uh, and uh, those are molded and clear. The taillights are already molded onto the body. I'll give you another look at that here at the back. And we're just going to go over those with some Tamiya uh, transparent. They call for transparent red and transparent amber. They're at the, at the tail, so we'll get those detailed on there. Um, the, the chassis plate basically is what you'd call it that. Again, mentioning that it's a curbside kit, so we don't have any engine detail there. But you do get a front suspension. It is steerable. Uh, you get the rear axle that we showed you on the black part sprue there, the drive shaft, the chrome exhaust system running from the front to the rear. And uh, so there's enough detail there on the bottom. Now this big hole that you see here in the back is kind of curious. I'm going to show you on the instructions in just a second what that's for. But uh, here we can see we have more of the suspension. We have a steel axle for the rear and two metal pins for the front. So the uh, suspension will be nice and sturdy on this uh, model when it's finished. And here's the... Uh, Beautiful little decal set. I'm really impressed with this. You've got all the license plates, so we can do our revolving license. The uh, detail for the uh, defense mechanisms, the tracking device that he had in a hidden panel on his dash, all the gauges, uh, some simulated wood grain effect for the dash and everything, so that's going to look really nice. And some small Aston Martin emblems and some other emblems that go on the car here and there. So we've got a nice little decal set with that. Let's take a look at the instructions here real quick, guys. And... Uh, it's nice that they printed this in both English and Japanese, even though it's pretty easy to, uh, to figure out just by looking at the, uh, the basic assembly instructions here. It's pretty straightforward. You start off with the wheels and tires. You go on to the chassis, and then you go on to the interior. And then you finish up here uh, at the end by putting all the detail onto the body and then finally putting the figures together. Um, over here, they show you uh, how to scribe out the... Uh, uh, if you want to remove the roof panel and to open up the panel there at the rear for the uh, uh, bullet, bullet shield there at the back. And I went ahead and did that already. Um, but here on the instructions, we'll show you if I can figure out what part it is. Here we go. Um, this actually has an operating uh, bullet shield that can be raised up and down. And it's really a neat little idea that they put into this. It's a, basically a cam mechanism. It's a circular shaped and it's uh, beveled so that when you turn it, it will either raise or lower up our defense shield. I'm going to show you that little part here on the back of the car. What I've done is I've painted the top edge of that in the silver body color so it matches when it's retracted with a little bit of clear on that. And I'm going to paint the face of it here kind of an iron color. But uh, this basically sits in here like this. And uh, when, you when you rotate the uh, 
the knob there on the bottom, it will extend and come up like that. So I think that's a really neat little touch that they put onto this model and uh, straight out of the film. So we're going to be incorporating that in here. And um, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm hoping I can do a nice job uh, painting the little figures there. I'm not the best figure painter in the world, but uh, it's really great that they uh, included those with the kit. And it's kind of what put me over the top when I was deciding to buy it. Okay, everybody. Well, what we've got going on here is some interior work that I'm going to be doing on the model. And I wanted to add a little bit of detail to it. So I've got my uh, black velour flocking material here and my small little atomizer. And I'm going to be applying some uh, simulated carpeting here at this little deck area behind the rear seat and on the floor pan here before we put our bucket seats in. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing that. I'm just starting out with some good old simple Elmer's glue all and a cheap little brush here and I'm just going to apply this right onto this part in a nice uh, little coat of uh, evenly spaced uh, application here. We don't need to have this like super thick. We just want to make sure it's all the way there and all the way across. Because when we look in the back window of the car we'll be able to see this, uh, this detail here. Okay, and before it dries we're just going to go ahead and uh, lightly atomize this and dust on a coat of this uh, flocking material and it makes a really nice I've shown this before on a couple other videos and uh, you guys keep asking about this so I'll show it again here for you once more and I'll put the link up on the uh, the video uh, in the comments section it's too long of a link to put on for a caption but I'll put it on the uh, the video here so you guys can find out where to get this little atomizer at and the flocking material is pretty much available just about anywhere they even carry it at most local hobby shops. But we've got this on there looking really nice. I'm going to set that off to the side here now. And we're going to go ahead and do our floor pan. And uh, just kind of keep it in the areas where we know we're going to see the, the carpeting. Got a little bit here in front of the rear seats. And along the sides here. kind of getting this general area up here in the front. You're not really going to be able to see that. It'll be up underneath of the dash, but try to make it even here if we can. I'm going to go all over the console there and the sides of the uh, tunnel. Okay. I think we're ready guys let's go ahead and give this a shot I'm gonna put some more uh, flocking in here before I start and this stuff is available in all kinds of different colors I've got quite a collection of this stuff here um, that really adds a nice little detail onto it you can also like I talked about before you can also use this tool to uh, do landscaping and stuff on some of your dioramas with some of the uh, material that's out there that can that's fine enough to go through this simulating you know like dirt and sand and stuff like that just putting it on here trying to cover it quick this glue dries pretty quick Okay, I need some more material in there. <clears throat> Sometimes you might have to do this once or twice, but you don't want to uh, you don't want to really tamp on it with your fingers too much because it makes little depressions in it. You want to let it dry um, fairly, you know, the way it went down. Let's get a better angle at this side over here. In the center where my bucket seats go, I didn't I didn't put any glue, so we don't want to have a totally obscured floor when we when we uh, 
want to glue those down, but you can see those little bare spots right there. But everything that's not covered right now is going to be covered up or, or not be seen. So that's really nice. It's a nice little even flow. I can see a little light spot right there. So I'm just going to uh, take my glue and just barely, you know, lay a little bit on there just to kind of make a new spot. And we'll go ahead and hit that before the rest of it settles down. give a little tap and that get, gets rid of all the excess. Now we'll go and we'll clean up this edge just here a little bit with our finger. You can just wipe that excess glue off like that. That way our, uh, our side of our door panel will glue on there and not have any problem. But it's going to look great and it's going to be a nice little extra detail that we put on the inside of this model that we'll be able to see, especially when we have the roof panel off. Okay, so there's that guys. All right, everybody, we'll hear some more of the model as it's coming along. I'm making some really good progress on it. We did our carpet flocking there. We got that all done. So I put the, uh, all the seats together here, got everything painted and put in, got the dash put in, um, got our little gear mechanism put in back here for the uh, bullet deflector mechanism. So that's worked out pretty good. Uh, the decals that came with this are really great. They fit in there perfect. A little bit of a uh, solva set on those and they settled right down in and laid down on the dash really nice. So I did a little wood grain uh, on the steering wheel there and. Uh, detail painted the uh, scanner down there at the bottom did a little bit of tamiya transparent uh, green over the top of that chrome piece in there and it makes it look like it's kind of lit i'll uh, get it centered here for you and i'll zoom in on this for you a little bit so you can see our detail going on in there i think that's about as close as i can get before it'll get blurry guys but you can see our uh, carpet flocking here turned out great and we've got our nice little even the, they even have the little chrome headrest brackets there. That's really a little detailed little model on the inside. I really like that. And uh, you can see by the look of the gauges in there, it really made it look a lot nicer um, than if we could have tried to paint that on. So <clears throat> that came out really great. So what I'm working on here is on the bottom, um, I'm just about ready to put the exhaust on. So I thought I'd show that. I've got everything else done here. The uh, uh, just kind of <clears throat> went with some flat black here on the bottom and then spruced up the uh, suspension by going with the uh, medium gloss on that just to kind of make it look a little different, the transmission, the drive shaft. This is our little mechanism here that you turn for the uh, uh, bullet deflector thing on the top and I got that working. I had to put a little bit of grease in there to make sure it would, uh, otherwise it was kind of sticky and really hard to turn. Um, so that should work pretty good. But we've got this little exhaust system that needs to go on now, so I figured I'd show putting that on. We This was originally a chrome piece, and I just went over this with some testers, uh, silver aluminum, and then in the very tips I left them chrome, and then put a little bit of black there on the top to uh, give them an appearance like they're open. So let's go ahead and glue this on, on, on the bottom pan here, and we'll be pretty much uh, done with the chassis. And then we're going to be able to move on to the... Uh, uh, body by getting the glass put in. Once we drop the glass in there, we can set the body down onto the chassis and uh, we'll be uh, ready to start doing all the detail on the body. We've got to, you know, put the bumpers, the grill, all that kind of stuff on there, but uh, the chassis worked out great. This does have a steerable front end, like I said, but it's really stiff. The uh, uh, I didn't want to open up the holes too much and make, you know, too much play and everything, but uh, it's a little hard to turn. I think once everything's dry, the wheels are dry and everything, it'll, I'll be able to turn it better. So I've just got a, everything centered straight forward right now. But uh, everything has little peg holes where they go. So we're just going to start here at the front and put those first two in. And then there's another one here at the center. Go with that one. And then getting here towards the back, we got one right there. It's a little bit tight there. Yeah, it wants to pop out on me right there. Make sure we're not sticking up too high there on the inside of the car. I want to make sure it's kind of level from the side and not bent here too. That looks pretty good to me. It's, it's uh, kind of bowing on here, on the middle here just a little bit and trying to make the uh, front part pop out there. It's going to take a little bit for that glue to set up. 
Okay, guys, but you can see that the uh, exhaust looks really nice on there now. It just sticks out the back there a little bit. And uh, what I'm going to do is put a little bit of piece of tape over this and let this sit for just a little bit. We'll set that off to the side. I'm going to go over and start uh, working on the body now and getting the body all uh, the uh, glass ready to go in. And we'll come back and show you that. This is looking really good, though, guys. But this pipe keeps popping on me, so i got to tape it. I'll do that, and we'll be right back with the body work. All right, everybody, back with you again, and we're ready to put the glass in the body now. I've been uh, working on the body here just a little bit. I used this little uh, silver paint pen and went around and did all the uh, chrome highlights on the uh, moldings and around the headlights and around the windows and all that good stuff. Got that all de detailed and looking really nice. And I uh, had to do that before we put the glass in. The glass, I trimmed it all down. I removed the side parts, um, got everything trimmed up to where it fits in there really nice and we've got our um, glass ready to go I took a little bit of this polish here too and went over the glass a little bit because the kit glass is usually kind of blurry and this helps clean it up just a little bit so I'm going to use my favorite canopy glue here and we're going to get uh, the windows glued in this now so I'll just make a little puddle here on my uh, spot on the table and use a little toothpick and we'll just put a little bit in there we don't need a lot these Windows actually fit pretty tight in this model for once. Usually they don't want to go in there, they're kind of stubborn, but um, these fit pretty good. So I'm just going to dab a little bit of glue around the edges here. And up above. I like this stuff because it dries totally clear and it uh, if you accidentally smudge anything or whatever you can wipe it right back off and start over again so here we go gonna turn her upside down here and get the uh, back glass put in you can see my glue expanding a little bit so that means I made uh, good contact with that <clears throat> the front one we're gonna do the same thing here just a little bit of glue I left just enough they had a little um, flange that sort of went all the way around on this thing and it I left just enough of it sticking out there where we could get to it with a little bit of glue Okay, let's go for our front windshield. Oop. Grab my uh, tweezers real quick here, guys. Dropped it in there and don't want to get fingerprints all over it. Front one fits pretty tight. Okay, I'm just going to support this back one here and just take a look. Excellent, guys. I don't see any um, glue smudges or anything, so we look real good. I'm going to let that go ahead and dry now. Uh, I'm going to have to let it sit upside down for a while so the uh, back glass will stay in there. So I'll take a little break here, guys, and we'll come back for the final segment here of the uh, body going down on top of the uh, chassis. And then we'll uh, finish up on this by uh, putting all our little chrome trim and all of our other little details in this. And we'll be finished up with it, okay? Be right back with that one, guys. Coming down for the final stretch here. Okay, everybody, well, I've moved ahead a little bit here and completed the work on the whole model now. I thought I'd show you this whole thing in one video instead of skipping to one more. There wasn't going to be that much more to show besides the model being done anyway, so let's throw it in on this one. Uh, you can see I've got the figures put together and everything here. I did a little bit of paint work on them, get you a little bit closer to them. Uh, I'm really happy how they turned out. I uh, went and watched a couple of uh, 
videos on YouTube about how to paint figures and started trying to learn the different techniques they're using for that. I've still got a long way to go as far as getting good at painting them, but I'm pretty happy how they turned out. I did a little bit of a shading on them to give them a little bit of texture and things like that and uh, follow the lines on them pretty good. So pretty happy, but you can see we've got all of uh, Bond's little accessories there, his uh, attache case, his sniper rifle, his homing device. He's got the Walther in his hand. And of course, odd job there with his uh, killer bowler hat. And uh, the, the main part of the model, like I said, is the car, but this is the entire kit. It comes with this little base that it's sitting on. And uh, really happy with how the car turned out too. And I'll show you that here. I'll back the camera up and uh, we'll get the car out in front here. Just get you down a little bit here. And um, the car turned out really good. I'm really happy with it. We'll show it to you here. Um, the model is uh, kind of finicky in a few places, as I found out as I was putting the chassis onto the body. Uh, it didn't really want to fit very well. It was either kind of too high in the front or too high in the rear or uh, just didn't want to sit in there snug. So I had to do a little bit of uh, looking around to see where things were hitting and things like that and do a little bit of trimming here and there to get that all to work out. Uh, got the uh, mechanism in the back that operates the bulletproof shield behind the rear window. Started working on that and found out that it was... While a good intentioned idea, just in practicality, it just didn't work very well. It kept getting jammed and stuck, and then what would happen here is the um, the shield itself would would uh, if it would lose contact with the uh, the cam when you were lowering it. If this got stuck a little bit, it would just fall inside the car, and that wouldn't be good if you had the chassis all glued down and everything. So I came up with a little uh, fix for that. What I did is I took a couple of pieces of photo etch. Uh, scrap photo etch that I had, some, just some parts of brass, and I cut out these little thin sort of strips and I made little spring looking things, just a flat piece with a little kind of curved end on it. And I glued those on the bottom of the uh, trunk assembly here facing the uh, shield itself and they're just barely touching it, putting a little bit of pressure on it, just a, a little bit so that uh, when I'm raising and lowering it, it, uh, it'll have a little bit of tension on it. And if I happen to, you know, get it a little bit loose when it's on its way down, um, it won't fall out and that seemed to have fixed that up. I'll go ahead and operate this for you. Um, get the sunroof out of the car here or the, I call it the sunroof, but it's the, uh, the blow off hatch for the ejector seat. So we added that little detail on this, but basically on the bottom of the car here, you can see the detail we have. It's not, uh, as I said, it's just a curbside kit. So there's not a lot to show you here. You just have, uh, there's no engine detail, but you have the exhaust and you have a, the transmission, uh, and the, uh, drive shaft and rear differential so i just kind of painted the bottom in a flat kind of color and then added a little bit of uh, uh semi-gloss here and there to you know kind of break things up a little bit and painted the exhaust up uh, just to bring a little something to it but back here where the uh, spare tire uh, would normally be kept on the vehicle this is where the cam assembly is and you got these two little kind of pins that stick out here to grip with your fingers and you turn it and that raises the uh, the shield up or lowers it back down so um, i have to be kind of careful with it but I'll get my fingers on it here in the right place. And what I do with this now is I, um, I turn it just a little bit and then I bring up the, uh, the shield just far enough so where I can grab it with my fingers and I just pull it the rest of the way up and leave it there like that. Uh, that way it's fully deployed and it's looking like it's supposed to. I really didn't care about how smooth it went up and down at that point. I just wanted to make sure I could have it displayed either way, either up or down. So uh, that's worked out pretty good and I'm pretty happy with that. I'll go ahead and uh, lower it back down in here now. My trick for this is I back the cam off just a little bit and then I uh, kind of push it down with my fingers until I feel it touch the cam again and then I just really carefully bring it down until it's uh, just flush on the trunk there and we've got to be really careful like I said you know it's uh, it's touchy and I don't want I definitely don't want it to uh, you know, fall all the way inside the car. So that's about as far as I lower it down right there. Maybe just a little bit more here. I'll, I'll dare myself for you guys on camera. There, we get that back down in there and um, that works out pretty slick. And then looking at the side of the car here, you can see we uh, did a nice silver paint job and we polished it all out. I went back before I put all the windows in and I went all around the car where it had the uh, silver trim with this little, um, uh, Oh, this is the gold one. I'm sorry, I've got the wrong one here, guys. Let me get the right one here for you. This uh, silver marker pen, it's a really fine-tipped one, and it puts out a really nice, almost chrome-like, um, you know, uh, 
color out of that. So I was able to add some of the, you know, kind of simulate some of the chrome features on the car and uh, went around and did all that. And then I wound up putting the glass in. I shaved the glass, uh, like I talked about, where uh, we didn't want the side windows in there. We wanted to remove those so we could see and then I could get my finger up in there. But I just tipped the model upside down to get the roof off whenever I want. I'm going to tilt the car up here for you and show you the uh, detail on the interior. Hopefully our flashlight will help show this a little bit. Um, but uh, what we did there is we put all those decals in that came with the kit and they're beautiful decals. They simulate the wood grain on the dash and uh, I painted the steering wheel there if you can see that and the wood grain and then did the little, uh, it had these sort of kind of little, you know, aluminum looking rivets that were on the top of it embedded into the wood. So we did that detail and then the scanner down there, if that's showing up for you, um, I uh, did that in some chrome trim and then I did the Tamiya transparent uh, green in the center of it and when the lights on it here it uh, or in a regular lit room it looks almost like it's illuminated because of the chrome uh, background that I have behind it so that worked out pretty cool and there you can see his control mechanism there for the defense system in between the seats uh, I don't know if the carpet flocking showing up in here but that adds a really lot of nice little detail to the back too you can really see it nice through the back window and um, that came out really good the car itself um, has a couple other features here to it. I'll demonstrate this for you. Uh, at the front, we have the um, changing license plate number. Now I'm gonna, I have, this thing is really finicky too and I have to be really careful with it, but let's see if I can get it to spin. Right now it's set on matching the, uh, the rear license plate. And then you just really carefully turn it around here. And now you've got uh, the second plate, which is 007 James Bond. I decided to put that one in there. And then we'll go around again here. And we have this one that says uh, BMT 216A. And then we go all the way back to our uh, original plate here. That will settle down for me. There we go. And you can see that works pretty neat. I'm pretty pleased with that little effect that they had on the on the car in the movie. Uh, it took a lot of fina uh, finagling around to get that to work too. I had to get in there and do some filing and, and uh, shaving and things like that. It, it was rubbing really bad and it was really, really hard to turn. And if you had a lot of pressure on it trying to turn it, you're going to wind up gouging the heck out of your decals because the only thing you can touch is the decals when you're trying to turn it. I did gouge them in a few little spots here and there trying to get the thing to work, but nothing major. Um, here at the back of the car, you can see we've got the uh, we did the taillights and everything, looking at how it looked in the movie. Uh, had, we uh, had the two reds on the top and a white one on the bottom. I used a little bit of a Tamiya uh, transparent red. I'll get you a little closer to that. And um, that, that uh, looks pretty good on the car. And on this side, we did the same thing with, you know, the chrome trim and just kind of went around it here and there and, uh, uh, you know, tried to add all the detail and everything onto it. On the front here, I did the uh, a little bit of um, a wash on the grill to bring out the you know the uh, the uh, features on it just a little bit, and we do have the steerable front end on the car. It does steer. Uh, this model has a uh, kind of a unique uh, setup for the axles too. They have these kind of little rubber inserts that you put inside the wheels, um, and that's what the axles actually uh, press into. They uh, and you have the option of whether you want to glue them or not. I, I went ahead and glued it. I don't like my models to roll. Um, I'm afraid they might roll off the shelf or something like that and wind up on the ground. So I always set them up just to uh, be static, but uh, you could have easily had this set up where it rolled and it would have uh, worked perfectly fine. But uh, like I said, I'm really happy with this, guys. It's a cool little kit. And when you place it uh, in the display, I'll tilt this whole thing back over here again and we'll finish up with a look at that again. Uh, when you you know, combine everything that you get here in this little kit. Um, it's a pretty nifty little setup. And like I said, it's, if you're a Bond fan, you know, um, I'm a, fi a fan of the classic Bonds. And uh, again, Sean Connery is my favorite. And Goldfinger absolutely is one of my favorite Bond films and Odd Job and all that and the car. And it's cool. They give you all these little accessories with it and everything. And it turns out really, really nice. So it's a neat little package. And like I said, look around, guys. You can find a good deal on these. They're sort of expensive on eBay, but if you hunt around a little while you'll you'll find one for a, a, a pretty reasonable price on this so that's a wrap for this one guys i hope you enjoyed it uh we'll be back here uh like i said uh 
or with another project. I don't know exactly what that's going to be yet. I'm kind of um, uh, thinking it's going to be a, a ship of some kind of sci-fi thing. I've got a couple kits sitting here that have been uh, waiting for a while. And then we're doing some work on some commission work. We're going to be starting up the big uh, Battlestar kit uh, from Badass Models. Uh, and that'll be a really fun one to work on. We're going to be doing battle damage and some custom lighting on that and making a nice display for it. That'll be a long project, and you guys get to see that here on the channel coming up, too. So I hope you enjoyed this one, guys. Like I said, I had a lot of fun with it again. Uh, I think it all turned out pretty good and uh, got a neat little display to add to the rest of our little movie car collection. Now, I wish they'd just kick out that Starsky and Hutch Torino. Everybody's waiting for that one, too. Don't know what the holdup is on that one, but uh, hopefully we'll see it soon. So until we see you next time, everybody, take care. And this time it's really the end. We'll see you next time, everybody. Happy modeling, guys.